you guys. This is Dave Clooney from dbclooney.com. And I wanted to talk to you today about uh, actually coloring filament with Sharpies. Um, I saw this idea a while back um, on Thingiverse. Uh, and actually, this is the object that you can download on Thingiverse. Uh, it has a hole in the center for the actual filament to travel through. And then what you do is you take whatever color that you want to uh, make. Um, for this example, this is like a greenish, tealish, whatever you want to call it, uh, mint green. Um, you basically would insert four of these into this or just one uh, if you don't want any color basically the more the more colors you have in here the more intense the coloration is going to be and then what happens is is that as the filament goes through the actual sharpie colors the side of the filament and then when it melts it actually turns the the filament into that color and uh, even before I downloaded this piece and was coloring uh, filament I actually just took like a and, and in fact you want to make sure you get the sharpie uh, fine points uh, which is just the normal everyday sharpies um, and not get like something like this which is the mistake I initially did which is the brush thinking that hey more of a brush head then it's gonna be easier to hit more of the filament well yeah unless I were to actually like scale this piece to fit this it doesn't necessarily fit right off, the, right off the bat. So I was actually just coloring the filament before it was going in. And you can tell, you know, here's a, one piece. It's like a yellow orangish. You can tell I, I colored a lot on the, on the filament that went in initially, quite a bit. And then, you know, as it goes through and then finally turns back into clear. And this is, a, I was using a 3 2 print. Uh, natural filament color, which is actually clear. Um, what I'm using this is 100% infill. And you can actually see right through there. See, which is pretty impressive, actually. I think um, it's not optically clear, but it's definitely uh, definitely clear enough where you can see through it when you print at 100% infill. And so this is just a clear, straight up piece I did. This is the, the whole thing for uh, an adjustable extruder. Um, and then I did a green one. So did a little bit of green then kind of went up to clear. And then the last piece I did, uh, which is really cool, was this one. And you can tell, so it printed like this, it printed upside down. And the, initially I didn't have any coloration in there, probably the first one eighth uh, of the filament. Um, and then I stuck uh, two blue markers on each side and it turned out this really nice blue color, which I was really surprised with. So, and I've been trying to find blue f transparent filament for a while and lo and behold, I could have made it all myself the whole time. But anyways, uh, so yeah, so that's what you can get. Um, and I imagine if you use uh, a white filament, um, if you only use like one or two, you might get more of a pastel -y type color. Whereas if you use all four colors, you might get more of an intense, or all four markers in this holder, you might get more of an intense uh, uh, color out of your, uh, your object. Um, which also makes me think of, that if there's a way for us to, you know, maybe set up a block of markers and then have them controlled by servos to where uh, if there was some way for us to read in color data um, into the slicers, that they, it could actually, like, you know, you know, push forward whatever color it needed at the time when the filament is being fed in. And then by the time it gets to the hot end, it's to the portion of where it should be for that color. So you can actually do like maybe like if you're doing like a figurine and you want the face to be a certain like you know fleshy color, um, you could you know use like a fleshy tone marker or whatever to 
color of the face actually that color. And then you, you know, basically use like, you know, actual uh, Sharpies to, you know, further refine that after the process. But uh, yeah, so that was a, uh, that's just something I was kind of like, you know, thinking about and we need to see if the community could, you know, possibly come up with something like that. Um, so that way you could, you, you would only have to buy like, you know, one type of filament white and then, you know, you could, just, you know, make your own colors uh, that way. And then um, just uh, kind of do a quick uh, teaser for another post possibly in the future that I'm going to do soon. Uh, I did have the, those Polymaker um, filaments and I'll give you a quick peek at those. This is the natural chip for the Polymaker. So it's actually not white, it's uh, clear, just like the 3, 3D print stuff. So you can actually like, you know, color this to make translucent filaments. Or if you really wanted to just buy it from them as well, because here's the nice coloration of the filaments from Polymaker. So it's you know, the red, the yellow, the blue, and the orange, which they're really, really nice. And these are all PLA. Uh, the 3 t the three two print natural color was actually ABS. Um, then three two print uh, also gave me a spool of their wood filament, and this actually contains wood, unlike some other companies who are trying to mimic the wood, uh, you know, look and feel. This actually is wood, just like the laywood. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than the laywood, but not by much. Uh, well, probably about half. Uh, the laywood itself, I think for a quarter of a kilogram, um, was like 80 bucks and you get the same amount for, uh, you get 800 grams essentially for, uh, for the same price, I should say. So then last time, at least, um, someone wanted me to, uh, show the ultraviolet sensitive filament. Now it's nighttime where I am right currently, so the only way I can show you that how sensitive this stuff is, because it's very sensitive, uh, is with a blue laser, which is pretty intense, but as soon as I took this out of the box and it hit sunlight, it was turning color to like the magenta, and then like it took probably maybe five seconds to get to a really deep color. Um, and I'll show you by just Shooting a blue laser across that here. See? Boom. That's how fast it changes. It's pretty intense. Now, what I was thinking for this would be cool is, like, um, for people who, you know, go in the sun or suntan, they could have some kind of, like, a badge or a chip that, you know, if they're wearing sunscreen, they could actually apply the sunscreen to this uh, chip as well. And then as that, you know, wears off, um, you know, go, or goes throughout the day. Uh, like actually, maybe a bracelet would be better because it actually like would maybe possibly get some pers perspiration on it as well. Um, you could actually uh, reapply based on the coloration of the or the intensity of the magenta slash purple pink or whatever you want to call it um, of the filament. I think that'd be kind of a neat idea. Uh, because then, then, then you basically would have to read it. Because this should, I mean, sunscreen should protect this just as it would your skin. So, it's uh, just something I was kicking around, kicking around the old noggin. But, we'll see. But yeah, it, it's pretty intense and then it, it, it goes back uh, to normal pretty quickly. But, so I just wanted to show you guys that stuff. And uh, hopefully, uh, you check out the blog read through some things. If you like what you see, uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, YouTube channel. Um, hit me up for, uh, if you want to get the newsletter from my blog. Um, pretty much right now I just have, when I post stuff, uh, people get alerted through the email process, but that's about it. Uh, but yeah, it's just another way for me to connect with you guys. If uh, you have any questions, you can always shoot me a tweet or uh, an email. I'm on Google Plus and Facebook. Um, and yeah, hope to see you guys again.